on the move today there are an estimated one hundred twenty million cars traveling the country's nearly two million miles of paved roads and creating what some experts say may become the worst repair and maintenance crisis in transportation history we've been literally driving ourselves into the ground We've gone through a decade now, 10 straight years, where on a national average, more roads have fallen into disrepair every year uh, than have been repaired. So the backlog of road deterioration has been increasing to the point now where more than half, 53% of the paved road network in the United States is now classified in substandard condition. And that represents more than a million miles of highway that people are driving on every day. Uh, the average life of a roadway in the United States is 16.2 years. That will vary greatly on a number of things. But basically, many of our roads are 20, 25, 30 years old and older. So they're going to need substantial repairs. There's no denying it. Our highways are getting old and showing their age with potholes and other signs of deterioration. The Road Information Program estimates the total repair cost today at nearly $225 billion and the problem and the price tag will get worse if we delay. Our studies have shown that since World War II there has been a steady increase in the number of dollars spent on highway construction and maintenance in the United States at all levels of government, state and local. However, when one takes into consideration the increasing cost of road repairs in terms of a price index and adjust these investments, we find that somewhere around the middle 1960s our annual investment in highway construction and maintenance peaked out and since that time there has been a steady decrease particularly at the state level in the amount of dollars that are spent on roads either in a dollars per year or dollars per mile per year basis at the local level both in municipal and rural government has uh, shown essentially a flat trend since the middle 1960s neither growth nor decrease but certainly the age of the highways has been increasing and the dollar needs of the roads are increasing and so even at a flat level we really are not responding to the current needs for highway finance we took a look in new york state last year at the state maintained system of arterials and collectors in in, uh, in new york and we found at that time that there were some 3200 miles of highway in new york rated fair and should be resurfaced but if the roads were not resurfaced and they were allowed to deteriorate to poor condition over a period probably of about six years, the eventual cost to the taxpayers in the state would be two billion dollars more. It's an average of more than two hundred dollars for every driver in the state. But simply because the money's not available now to resurface. Why isn't the money available? Historically, revenue for road repairs came from motorists. The more you drove, the more you paid. Motor fuel taxes paid at the pump with every gallon of gasoline or diesel fuel added up to 80% of the total money spent on road maintenance in 1972. This year, it has dropped to just over 50%. The combination of more fuel-efficient vehicles and a drop-off in the number of miles driven by individuals may be helping to solve the nation's energy dilemma, but it's robbing billions of dollars from state and federal highway coffers, the primary source for road funds and the dollars that are coming in can't keep up with inflation. The cost to repair roads jumped more than 200% between 1967 and 1979, while at the same time, fuel tax revenues rose by only 40%. The revenue shortfall will get even worse. From 1978 through 1985, government mandates requiring the auto industry to improve fuel efficiency are projected to cut fuel tax revenues by 64 uh, percent. In 1978, the fleet average of a new automobile was uh, 18 miles per gallon. Traveling 10,000 miles, that vehicle would, would have produced in 1978 $75 for state and federal highway programs from gasoline taxes. By 1985, because of increased fuel efficiency 
And as we see that mile per gallon figure go up on an average to 25 and 26 miles per gallon, we're going to see the revenue generated by a vehicle over 10,000 miles slip to $45 and less. That's a tremendous decrease. Before you pocket those pennies you saved at the gas pump, pennies that might have patched potholes, think about this. One way or another, everyone pays for potholes. Well, bad roads, as you know, do a lot more than simply shake you up behind the wheel. They damage your vehicle and they cause your vehicle to use more fuel. At mid-1981 prices, the average driver in the United States was spending an additional $204 annually to pay for the increased fuel use and the increased vehicle damage brought on by poor roads in this country that he was driving over. As we see the vehicle bouncing down the highway, the bouncing and shuddering causes a loss of traction, causes an inefficient uh, transfer of power to propulsion in the vehicle, and you burn more gasoline. At the same time, Road tests have shown us that bad roads can increase your tire wear as, as much as 150 percent. And it can also double the necessary maintenance that you will have to perform on your vehicle's brake system, steering system, and suspension system. Potholes in substandard roads will cost us even more this year. As traffic hazards, they'll be at least partially responsible for over one-fifth of the nation's highway accidents. Roads come up as the second leading cause of accidents in the United States. Uh, they are second only to accidents that are caused by driver error, things such as falling asleep at the wheel or drunk or driving. Uh, they are causing nearly four million accidents a year that is uh, costing those accident victims more than eight billion dollars a year in medical expenses and property damage claims and things such as that. One way or another, everyone pays for potholes in wasted fuel, in vehicle repairs, in property damage, medical and funeral expenses, along with insurance payments. Altogether, not repairing potholes and substandard roads will cost Americans over $38 billion in 1981. Let's face it, our highways are wearing out faster than they're being repaired. And if this continues, experts at the Road Information Program say what was once a first-class road network will become hopelessly obsolete, inefficient, and dangerous. At the crux of the problem lies the pothole. Cornell University highway engineer Lynn Irwin explains the factors that cause potholes. One is the weather, second is traffic, and the third is the kind of materials and design of the road. If we have a situation where we're in northern climates and frost penetrates into the road, causes moisture to collect underneath the road, heavy traffic, and maintenance techniques inappropriate for the uh, age of the pavement, we'll wind up with a flock of potholes every spring. Another major factor affecting potholes and road deterioration is truck traffic. The trucking industry has increased axle loads in recent years. This additional weight, coupled with aging roads, creates a tremendous amount of stress on weak areas of a highway, especially on secondary roads where heavier vehicle loads are now common. Research has shown that a fully loaded truck causes damage equivalent to the, that of about 5,000 passenger vehicles, normal passenger vehicles. And in fact, we've also found that if you double the weight of a truck, it causes 16 times more damage to the highway than it would in its normal weight. In some places, there are more potholes than pavement. Elsewhere, the asphalt looks like a series of patches in search of a road. And everywhere, it's the same cycle of pothole and patch, pothole and patch. Cornell's Irwin says recurring potholes are usually the result of improper or ineffective maintenance techniques. I think most everyone has seen an airmail delivery uh, situation where material is shoveled off the back of a tailgate of a uh, truck, perhaps a cold mix type of material, and uh, thrown into a hole without any compaction to uh, make it a more uh, lasting uh, patch. If we just throw uh, material airmail delivery off the uh, tailgate of a truck uh, with water still in the hole and give it a couple of stomps with a boot, uh, that kind of a patch won't stay for any length of time at all. It might make the road trafficable during the uh, winter time, but uh, it only stays a couple of days and then is gone. Really, the time of the year to 
get after potholes is in the summer when there's good quality materials available to uh, make proper repairs. Reports from the Pennsylvania Highway Department uh, indicate that it costs about five times as much uh, per pothole to put in a temporary patch as it does to put in a permanent patch. Knowing what to do and having the money to do it properly on a tight budget are problems faced by many highway maintenance officials. Basically, I see the understanding is there in terms of uh, people who have done research and probably the engineering people. But the people that are actually building the highways have to be uh, trained in the proper construction techniques. I see that as a, a problem in getting the uh, knowledge down to the field level. The other area that I think is, uh, can be a problem is the expense of, of doing the job right the first time. Well, we run a 250-mile-plus system to uh, expect a piece of pavement to stand up for more than 10 to 15 years, I think, is unrealistic. Uh, so we're talking about uh, rebuilding uh, 20 to 25 miles of road per year. and. Uh, Cost-wise, today's costs something between $300,000 and $500,000 a mile of cost to our taxpayers would be astronomical. Put as much money into pavement maintenance as I can, and this type of patching, uh, approximately 45% of the money I get goes into it. Uh, and even at this rate, it would take me 40 years to repave this county. And actually, 10 to 12 years is really the time period we should be shooting for. Underneath this pavement here, uh, particularly in that lane, the right-hand edge was failing. The right-hand wheel rut contained quite a few alligator cracks, and it definitely needed paving this time. As you can see on this area we did not pave, you don't see much cracking at all. This section of pavement will probably go a few more years. It would be nice if we could cover this too, but the asphalt we would have put here, we're using in bad areas further down the road. We're not going to make it at the rate we're going. Declining budgets, taxpayer disenchantment, inflation, competition among numerous public service organizations for financial support. These are problems cited by numerous highway officials we interviewed that contribute to the monetary hardships in all levels of government. Summarily, they say, if I only had the money, I could do the job. Ithaca Town Supervisor Noel Desch feels that there are enough funds available to adequately maintain our highway system. It's simply a matter of planning. Uh, we came up with a 10-year repaving and improvement plan. And in doing that, we were able to set forth a program to improve the specifications and improve the the utilization, actually, of the resources that were being put forth. Actually, uh, quite a bit of the, the change or the shift in revenues took place by moving it from the so-called repair item of the budget to the improvement item, and then enhancing the amount that was made available there. About 40 percent of the town of Ithaca budget is allocated for capital improvements. 60% of that goes to road maintenance. Desch says legislators need to allocate funding based on what the return of the investment will be. You have a, an expensive service in the highway business, and you have to relate that to the cost of further deferring the maintenance of the roads. Uh, repaving is, is just as valid a preventive maintenance investment as lubricating a pump. So you have to relate the cost of that preventive maintenance with the cost of replacement. Highway superintendents, local government leaders, and regional highway engineers are trying to cut costs without cutting corners, trying to make dwindling road maintenance dollars go even farther. They're patching when they should be repaving, they're putting off repairs that can wait another year or two, and they're looking into money-saving alternatives, some as new as asphalt recycling some as old as a return to gravel roads. Pavement is a very, very expensive item these days. 
And there's no question that a town that owns a grader can maintain a gravel surface road uh, cheaper than they can a, a, a hot uh, surface road, uh, an asphalt surface road. And one of the uh, things that I believe is that a lesser finished pavement can do the job if the drainage and the sub-base of the highway is uh, built properly before the pavement's put on. And so uh, we spend quite a lot of attention on drainage and improving the sub-base before we put the pavement on so that the pavement we put on can be thinner and last longer uh, than we might have done, say, 10 years ago when oil wasn't as expensive as it is now. Rochester, New York is using a new technique that city engineer Doug Zefting says is stretching maintenance dollars and increasing the number of streets repaired each year. It's called cold milling. First, two to four inches of the existing asphalt surface are milled off. Next, it's trucked to a recycling plant where it's combined with new aggregates and a new asphalt cement or rejuvenator to bring it up to the standards of a regular process mix. The final product, 60% new asphalt and 40% recycled material is put down as a two-inch overlay. About one-third of Rochester streets were resurfaced this year with this recycled mix. The results so far are encouraging and economical. Well, there are some streets that are in need of complete reconstruction, and we do that to a limited extent as funds permit. Uh, the cost of a project like that is, is much more expensive than what we're doing here on Glide Street. Uh, the cost of a project like this is approximately five and a half dollars a square yard. It may cost us 60 to 80 dollars a square yard to completely reconstruct the street. Jerry Odenbach, general manager of Rochester Asphalt Materials, the plant the city uses for its recycling, says recycled mixes have all the engineering properties of more expensive virgin asphalt. And as for durability and life expectancy... Our approach is that the materials that we are supplying will give as long a life as, uh, and I would always hope to be optimistic here, perhaps even a longer life than the materials that they've used in the past. We have more involvement in the design of it. We, we're, we're reprocessing mixes that were made up to 20 years ago. And uh, the designs that we've developed around the reclaimed asphalt and the new material that we're adding in uh, are actually more orientated to uh, to lab design than the original mixes were, so we would hope that they, they would have a longer life. Declining budgets and financial constraints are probably the biggest problems facing highway officials in all levels of government. Just as unique as the monetary savings gained from pavement recycling is the cooperative effort between city government and private enterprise. Doug Zefting and Jerry Odenbach have researched, designed, and developed a highway maintenance plan that will provide a durable, long-lasting resurfacing technique that will save Rochester taxpayers 20%. Perhaps this style of partnership should serve as a model. I think anywhere that we can improve the process, make it more efficient, and reduce our costs, and ultimately the cost will stretch the highway dollar and give them more miles to cover and more holes to fill with the same amount of dollars. We're, we've been through a tremendous increase in, in costs through the last five or six years through the energy crisis. And uh, here we've lopped off two years of increase in, in product costs for those public agencies by uh, initiating this process in this area. Finding new and less expensive ways to make existing roads last longer isn't just happening on the streets of Rochester. In research labs and on test roads at Cornell University, highway engineers believe the day of designing new roads is past. They're concentrating on ways to improve existing road surfaces. Well, this is the cement stabilized base, a material very much like the one that we were testing in the laboratory. And this is a cold mix asphalt concrete surface. Very good, very good quality material, which has performed very well on the surface of this demonstration road that we have built here on the Cornell campus. Water pressures can't build up in a surface made out of a material like this. 
And generally speaking, as far as the pothole problem is concerned, it's water that's the enemy of the pavement and causes the potholes to occur in the road. The cement stabilized base is able to resist the pressures of frost much better than an untreated base would be. And so as a result, it maintains its strength through the springtime while the pavements are breaking up. And this kind of a pavement will not uh, get soft like an ordinary gravel base would. Irwin's observation about moisture being the highway's worst enemy is echoed by Bill Mobs. Three most important parts of highway construction are drainage, drainage, and drainage. And the roadway that we visualize is subjected to drainage problems from three directions, the top, the sides, and from underneath. And so whenever we pave a road, uh, we try to have a crown in the road that will ensure surface drainage try to maintain ditches that are deep enough on the sides to prevent infiltration from the sides. And the drainage from underneath uh, is generally uh, dealt with through use of proper road base material. Key to preventing them is good construction. Uh, proper methods of uh, base construction and a good piece of pavement on top. Uh, repairing them is a different problem. Repairing them, uh, to my mind, has to be done in good weather with a similar material to what the original pavement is. In Cortland County, heavy truck traffic caused this road to become ravaged with potholes. Project foreman Charlie McAvoy says by putting in a solid base with good drainage characteristics, the road should last for 10 to 15 years. Well, as you can see, our base here isn't too good. It's a lot of, like, clay in it. But we're trying to cut it down about three foot and put a good solid base in for drainage. And then we'll overlay the center with three inches overlay, and hoping to do away with all the, the potholes that we have had and what we anticipate we'll have in the future. Truing and leveling is another technique being used on secondary and low-volume roads to help eliminate potholes. Often, as roads age, a double crown will develop in each lane. Overlaying fills in the deep spots and flattens out the high spots of the road and reconstructs the crown back in the center of the highway to provide better drainage. The thin overlay being applied on the road surface will improve its writing qualities and keep water from getting into the surface. Whether road construction materials and traffic all interact to cause potholes in road weakening, especially during spring thaws. It's not so much the increased volume of traffic, but rather the heavier loads of trucks that have created an estimated 120 million potholes. In fact, one fully loaded tractor trailer like this does as much structural damage to a highway as 5,000 standard size automobiles. But a new device will enable the Cornell researchers to quantitatively measure highway stress. The Long weight deflectometer has a large steel mass that drops onto some rubber shock absorbers and in turn puts a load pulse into the pavement. The deflection of the pavement is sensed by several transducers and the result of this is that we can relate the load and the deflection basin on the surface of the pavement to one another. As far as the pavement is concerned, this device looks to the pavement like the passage of a fully loaded uh, semi-truck moving at about 40 miles an hour. How do you make materials used in roads stronger and keep them economical? That's another problem Cornell researchers are investigating. We have a material that uh, is a very dirty gravel with a lot of sand and silt in it would ordinarily make a very poor quality road. We've added a small amount of lime in this particular case to combine with the clay and make a cement that binds the material together. Ordinarily, a truck tire applies to the surface of the road a pressure of approximately 60 to 100 pounds per square inch, and a passenger car might be anywhere from 25 to 35. The material's failing now at a load of about 11,000 pounds, if you use a stronger material like this, you don't need so much of it in order to be able to support the 
vehicle weights on the road. Furthermore, this material retains its strength through the spring thaw period and doesn't get weak, so it tends less to form potholes than the normal conventional construction. So with stronger reconstruction materials available, why then aren't more highway departments using this type of substance when patching potholes? Well, this is a departure from the normal way of doing business, and I think quite naturally many highway agencies are reluctant to take on a new type of technology that's outside their current uh, background and experience. But there is a growing interest in using this kind of technique for building roads in New York State. The key to solving the spread of potholes, and hopefully eliminating a few million of them, is proper maintenance. Whether a permanent hot patch can be applied during the winter months is the issue being debated by highway industry officials. Some contend there's no feasible method of constructing a good quality patch due to inclement and variable weather conditions. But the fact remains that using a band-aid or temporary approach to pothole patching is costing taxpayers five times more money or out-of-pocket expenses, money that some officials feel can be better spent. Any type of material you put in a hole, the hole should be dry. It should, your corner should be squared off. Uh, the raveled edges should be taken back to sound pavement, and it should be compacted properly. With a coal mix, even if it's put in well, it, it will stay a short period of time, but any heavy rains or, or runoff, uh, frost heaves, it'll disappear. You're liable to fill that hole many times during the year. So in the long run, the, the coal mix, we think, is a lot more expensive. Well, actually, the technology that developed the system we have for recycling materials in mass or in large volumes is available to public agencies through minimal capital expenditure, where they can buy equipment that will...